What is going on today, guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay, and this is, yes, my third time trying to record this video because I keep forgetting to press record on OBS. I've got it this time, I think. Let's go. Uh, yeah, so the purpose of this video is basically to show you how I do my quantizing and flex time editing with my guitar audio tracks. It's kind of an amalgamation of a few different techniques, or maybe it's just something that I stumbled upon myself that just seems to work good for me. Uh, we're gonna jump right into Logic Pro here now, and you're looking at a new demo track that I've begun writing, it's not completed yet, for my upcoming guitar demo, although I've yet to receive that guitar. So meanwhile, I just started writing because the inspiration struck. I grabbed another guitar and just started out the framework of this new song. So that all being said, I often do that to get a jump start on stuff because then when I get the guitar in hand, it takes me a couple of hours or a day at most to re-record the guitar parts and then it's good to go. I'm gonna let you listen here to a part of this track just so you get a feel of what it sounds like. So here we go. Okay, so uh, as you can see, it's kind of a laid back kind of a vibe, right? It's just more of a fun, emotional feeling song. I don't really know how to categorize it, but it's just what I came up with. So we're gonna roll with it. Most often what you see is, you know, they'll select a region or a track, then you hit your flex time editor, then you select which, uh, you know, value you wanna use for chopping up your audio. And most often for guitar, we use polyphonic, right? We all know that. And then they go ahead to the left here and they hit the quantize and select your value, your note value. That works all well and good, except afterwards, you see that they're often editing the transients because it didn't place them in the right place to begin with. So what I like to do is actually edit the transients before I do the quantizing at all. So again, go to your region, either double click on it or press the E on your keyboard for the editor, pulls that up. And then what I wanna do is go to the file tab Go to this button here, which is your transient editing mode. Select that. There's your transients in red. And this screen here might look a little different than what you're used to. You know, you're probably more familiar with that view, but I prefer this one here. I don't know, it just works well for me. So what I'm doing, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna listen through and see how the transients hit, as well as watch them and listen at the same time to make sure that they're placed in, in the right place. Because as we all know, the algorithm can just stick you know, random transients like that, just randomly somewhere where you don't want them. And sometimes there aren't ones where you need them to be. So what I found with this method is that oftentimes the transients will be placed somewhere in the middle of a slide, if I'm sliding up or down the neck, or with your other legato stuff like your hammer-ons and pull-offs, where you don't necessarily want a transient marker because you don't want that to be quantized. Because if it's in the middle of a slide somewhere, it's just gonna make the slide sound unnatural. So oftentimes I'm removing transients uh, from this grid screen here as I go along. But anyways, let's listen to this track at full tempo, the second half of the track rather, and then we'll go through and do the editing. All right, so you get a sense of what that sounds like, that, that passage, right? So let's go back to the editor now, and uh, we're gonna watch it through, but this time we're gonna use VeriSpeed, slow it down. Anywhere from, I would say, 10 to 30% is usually good. You know, you wanna slow it down enough so that you can see in time what's happening as you're hearing it. And I'm also gonna turn on the click track so we can make sure that it sounds like it's in time or not. All right, so from what I'm seeing, it appears that the transients are indeed placed where they should be and that there aren't any extraneous ones that shouldn't be there. So we can close the editor now. Now we're good. Um, I would mention this though. There will be times when there's just, like I said before, there's just a random, random transient in the middle somewhere and you know it doesn't belong there because you can see the note decaying and it's just in the middle of that note. So you just double click on it, removes it. If you wanna add one, command click, there you go. 
So, and you can move these around too. So if this isn't quite right for some reason, you know, like I said, delete it, stick it where you want it, or just drag and click and move it around. Um, that'll get you what you need. So editor closed. Now we're good with the transients. Now we can quantize and be pretty guaranteed that it's gonna come out right. So I'm gonna use the eighth note value because that seems to work well for this passage. And uh, if you click on this more button here, you can go down here and you can see the quantized strength. If you don't already know this, uh, it always defaults to 100%. That's the value it is. So it's going to sound perfectly locked to the grid. Whether that's what you want or not is up to you. So let's listen to 100% now. I don't know about you, but for me, that 100% lock to the grid feel is just a little too robotic, a little too tight for this kind of song. So I want to pull it back a little bit. So you can just, like I said, take this Q strength value and just drag it down, drag it down to whatever you want. If you go all the way to zero, that's no quantizing at all. So all the blue notes, so that's what you originally played. And if you go all the way to 100%, the blue notes still represent notes that were perfectly in time to the grid to begin with, which shows you that yes, we are human and that we often don't play perfectly to the grid like we wish we could. And those are perfect notes. Uh, the white notes represents, I think the white notes represents notes that have been compressed, shortened, and then the gray notes are ones that have been stretched out, time stretched and lengthened to fit to the grid. So like I said before, I don't wanna go 100%, that's too much for me. Let's pull it back to something like, I don't know, 90%, try that. Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me. Okay, so we'll keep that. Now we're gonna mute that one, go to the second track, uh, as this is double tracked. Same thing again, you know, the editor, transient marker. I can just look at this quickly now because there's not a lot of notes in here and I can see that this looks pretty much the same as the other one. So we're good in the editor uh, with this file here. So we're gonna quantize this again, eighth notes and uh, down to 90%. Oops, if I could see, there we go. Now we'll pan it hard left and hard right, if I can get that. Hello. There we go. And we'll listen to these two tracks here. Sounds great. All right, so let's move on to the clean ambient portion uh, below. So again, we're gonna do the same thing. Now, these tracks have very little going on, and I already checked it earlier, so I know that these transients are right, but if any were out of place, obviously I would just you know eliminate them or move them around as need be. So we don't need the editor window at all for this file, and that's, that's fine. But uh, what we're gonna do is uh, same thing, quantize. Where are we? Okay. I want to quantize this to eighth notes, okay? Now, and we'll do the same with, same with the bottom one here. Uh, quantize that region to eighth notes. And uh, 90%, 90%, that might be good. But because it's kind of an ambient, soft, pulling, pushing lead, sound, I don't really want to quantize that strongly. So I'm probably gonna back it off a little bit. Maybe let's go like, I don't know, 85%. And then with the second one, we'll go, um, you would think 85%, but I still want it to have that human feel. So I'm gonna go like 87%. So they're off by 2%, which is so such a small value, you probably won't hear the difference. But I think that also uh, helps to avoid any kind of phase issues. And it just sounds a little washy left to right, which is what I'm going for here. So let's hear it. And as you can see with this clean portion here, these two tracks, um, the first hit of each new section of eighth notes actually hits on the second eighth of the bar. So it has that kind of pulling, slowing down, playing behind the beat kind of 
feel, that vibe, and I want to keep that. I want to maintain that. So that's why I kept the Q strength down a little bit less. And I think this works well. That's basically it, guys. That's how I do my flex time editing for guitar stuff. And it seems to work well for me. So let me know in the comments down below, you know, what your favorite method is for quantizing. If it's something similar to this or something completely different. I know there are other techniques as well. I've seen those and I've tried them myself. And for me, they just don't seem to work as well or sound as good, but it's all, it's all subjective, right? So what works for me not might work well for you and vice versa. But let me know down in the comments. I really appreciate it. If you guys want to see some more of my Logic Pro you know, tech tips, whatever you want to call it, or just me recording stuff. I've got some videos linked down below. I'll leave uh, markers up here somewhere left or right. I don't know where it is. Uh, to, so you guys can check those out too. I really appreciate you guys watching to the end of the video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. We're trying to get 5,000 subscribers uh, in the next month or so. And uh, with your help, we can do it. So until next time, guys, I'm out of here. I'll talk to you soon. See ya.